Welcome to the Divorce Survival Guide podcast, where we have open and honest conversations about co-parenting, separation, divorce, and the hardest question of all, should you stay or should you go? I'm Kate Anthony, your Divorce Survival Guide, and I'm here to help you navigate some of the roughest waters you've ever swum in and answer some of your toughest questions. I've been to hell and back, and now it's my mission in life to help you get to the other side of this process with your sanity and your heart intact. Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, Before I get into today's show, I just want to remind you that for this month and next month only, so for May and June of 2022, if you're listening sometime in the future, sorry, (laughs) but for the next uh, six weeks or so, I am going to be, I am offering my Sanity Saver sessions for the general public, for you. Usually these sessions are reserved for my people in my programs who need sort of a little um, boost in sort of, you know, individual help if they're sort of getting to a place where they're like, ah, (laughs) I need Kate, Um, I'm stuck. Or these are really for people who when you're when you're getting to a point and you're like, I just wish I could have one session with Kate because I need to run this one thing by her, whether it's crafting the I'm ready for a divorce conversation, whether it's talking to your kids whether it's how do I navigate this, you know, this really difficult situation. I think I want to go, um, but I'm not sure. Am I making a mistake? Is this uh, is this abuse? Right. All of these things. If you just have been feeling like if I could just have one session with Kate, I could I could move forward. That's what these sessions are for. So um, you will find a link in the show notes. Um, for those of you who are also on my email list, you should have gotten an email about this the other day. You'll be getting another one shortly. Um, so check out the show notes. If you are, you know, an Apple podcast, there's a link in there. If you just go to my website and click on listen to my podcast and then click on the latest episode at the bottom, you will find a link, um, for how to sign up for these, uh, sanity saver sessions. Okay. So today I have with me a narcissist survivor. Narcissist survivor is an anonymous uh, Instagram page um, that is run by anonymously. (laughs) And so narcissist survivor is an outspoken expert advocate, guest speaker, specialist, and consultant on narcissism, narcissistic abuse, domestic violence, narcissistic personality disorder, and abuse recovery. She began the Instagram page Narcissist Survivor in 2013 um, by when she typed the words, am I crazy, into the search engine and seeing the word narcissist for the very first time. That began three years of voracious study on narcissism, narcissistic personality disorder, cluster B personality disorders, adverse childhood experiences, trauma, complex PTSD, child abuse and neglect, as well as formal domestic violence training and continue education on these important issues. And that is when in 2015, she began Narcissist Survivor on Instagram, which now has over 183,000 followers and our relationship began just again, you know, through Instagram, obviously, and sharing each other's content. And we developed and formed um, a more uh, sort of personal relationship and began talking about some of these complex, complex issues. And so I'm very excited to have Narcissist Survivor on the podcast. I've never had anyone anonymously on the podcast. I don't know I, I know nothing. I, I know as much as you do about who she is. Um, she's very much um, kept herself um, anonymous in these in this world, and I and I highly respect that. But I was really really excited to get to sit down with her and have this one on one conversation. So here is my conversation with narcissist survivor. All right, narcissist survivor. 
Thank you so much for being here. I, you know, I guess I feel like I want to start off and, and I frankly don't even know this. I've been following you for years and we've, we've communicated um, for years, but we've never spoken directly. So I am curious to know how you started um, this amazing Instagram feed and, and sort of your, the background of your story, if you wouldn't mind sharing it. Absolutely. Um, hi. <laughs> Kate, <it's nice laughs> hi. If you like this. How did I start? Probably the same same way a lot of survivors start. Um, I was in what I'm using air quotes as an on and off relationship for many, many years, 20 mm. years, in fact. And it was somebody that I, I thought I knew, somebody that um, my our, our parents knew each other. Um, we went to high school together and then mm. reconnected years later as adults. And um, he'd already had one child by that point in time. I actually met him on her uh, second birthday. Mm -hmm. And he was not with the the mom at the time. And he didn't see her much, I noticed, over time as we started dating and whatnot. And, you know, I kind of wondered about that. And and he would say (laughs) things like, Red flag! Exactly. And you'll see and notice the red flags that are so common when that we don't see when, when we're much younger, when we haven't been told anything about narcissism, we're not taught about it in school. I, I really had no point of reference at that time yeah. for what was on. So, and it, it happens to, that's how it happens. That's how it happens. So the, that's right. Yep, right. And the yep. mom was difficult difficult in air quotes again, Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. a bitch. She was crazy. Her mother was crazy. They were keeping his daughter from her. And of course, I never thought to ask, well, you know, are you going to court for that? Like for custody or like, where's again, and this is a question that, that women can ask when you're Mm -hmm. dating someone, right? Yeah, absolutely. you can do something about the custody thing if you're going to court. And that's usually, that that was another red flag. So, Uh, and um, also, and also like, why, why are they keeping the kid from you? Right. Like even when I'm, if I'm on a dating app and it says like, I have, you know, I have a daughter, but she lives with her mother. I'm immediately like, Nope. (laughs) Like, I'm sorry. Uh, Like, I don't know what the reason is, but there's probably, there's probably a reason. And if there isn't a reason you're opting out. So like that, like, Nope. (laughs) Right. Well, and that's a two edged sword, too, because there's a little thing called misogyny. Is there that has <laughs> Tell and, me about and that. the patriarchy <laughs> and that's all connected. Right. Because women are taught to compete for guys. We're taught <sighs> to mistrust each other, et cetera. Mm-hmm, that right. is misogyny and often internalized misogyny. So, you know, you want to believe that you're going to be the special one that's going to change his life and and his ex must be a terrible, oh my God, how could she do such a thing to such a lovely individual? You know, and it's, Mm -hmm. that is so much too, right? Right. Um, Again, that's another word that I, that I didn't know back then. Misogyny, what's that? How does it affect women? Right. And our relationship with each other and the way and what we think of each other. Uh, that's, and that's so important, right? Because we do think of misogyny as, you know, women being um, oppressed by men. But what we don't think of is how the patriarchy has set us up to be in competition with one another and actually st- have to step on one another in order to get ahead or, you know, anywhere and how much that con- that contributes to the oppression of women. Hundred percent, a hundred percent, and and with the end goal of patriarchy always in mind, that we must marry and have children. That's right. Otherwise, so, we are nothing. Yeah, exactly. Well, you're a spinster, an old maid, a crazy cat lady, <laughs> on and on. Right. right. Yep. Hundred percent. That is. That's a big thing that people don't necessarily connect with all of this, right? Yep. That's right. That's so true. It's so true. It's such a good point. So, so there were these red flags, like he didn't see his kid (laughs) and, and she was keeping, you know, the, the daughter from him. 
So, yes. so, so, so how did that progress? So I thought, oh my God, poor, you know, poor guy. And I felt like I knew him because I went to high school with him. And, and that's another thing to keep in mind. People change from, if you knew someone in elementary or high school or even college and you meet them like 10 years later, a a lot can go on in that time. Like you (laughs) don't, you know, knowing someone before is not, you, you don't necessarily know them now. And Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I hear that a lot too. Like I, like I thought I knew him because we had this history or we grew up together in the neighborhood or whatever. There's a difference between knowing someone and somebody that's familiar to you through, Mm -hmm. you know, proximity. right. Right. You've never been, if you, unless you've been in an intimate relationship with them, you don't know them in that way. I don't know if you hear this often or not, but also the, if you're friends with somebody And then, and I've heard it a lot, like, oh, I was friends with him for like two or three years. There was never, you know, kind of a sign that he was like this until we got into a relationship. And then suddenly he's become a different person. Uh Do you, do you get that feedback as well? Yeah. I mean, and I get that through marriage, right. So much of like, or like we were dating and he was wonderful and we got married and then it was like a a complete like change, like a, 80. like a 180. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I hear that a lot, a lot. What is that? So why is that? It's basically once a narcissist wants supply and I'm sure uh, mm-hmm. everybody mm-hmm. probably knows that word by now, narcissistic supply. It's, it's once you have that person locked down after you do the love bombing and you know, you have make that person fall in love with you through false pretenses you know, you're lying about who you are. Um, once you have speedily hastened them into a relationship with you, into falling in love with you, and this is where we segue into, oh my God, you're my soulmate. It's a fairy tale. Soulmate, red flag. If, oh. you, if he's your soulmate and in love with you after a week or two of dating and wants to marry you, nope, nope, nope. Run for the hills. Run. Run. Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm fall in love basically with yourself because they're not, they're not giving you who they really are. They're mirroring what you want, what you've told them you want in a partner because you, maybe you felt comfortable oversharing a bit and, you know, you've really given them a lot of information about yourself. And so they're able to mirror that back to you. Oh, I, I love that too. Oh, I had a white Jeep when I was in school too. Like, like they're looking for all these similarities. So it seems like you're so compatible. And then before you know it, you're in a long-term relationship. You're, you love this person now. You think this person really is your soulmate because they sure seem like it. And then all of a sudden, once they have you locked down, that's when you see that 180 and the flip switch, the, the, they flip the, the switch, right? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and that often happens. I've had women messaging me. It, it can happen to men too, but um, we'll maybe get into that dynamic a little bit later on, but um, that often the day of the wedding, their their person turns into somebody else on the yep. wedding day. Yep, Jekyll and Hyde. That all the time. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Narcissism being the spectrum that it is, right? That's like the farther end of really like malignant and um, deliberate, that is the more overt (laughs) form of, I think, um, narcissism and, um, you know, but then we have the more covert. That's just a little bit more subtle than that, which, so, okay. So, okay. So you're dating this guy. (laughs) I'm dating this guy and, um, and literally the same thing happened to me. It's it's, Uh the thing is people think, Oh, you know, my story, my story, it's it's all of our stories because it's the same story Yep. with slight variations, of course, but narcissists all follow the same patterns of abuse. That's why it seems like we're all dating the same guy. It starts with love bombing, like we talked about, and and all the way through into some people call it devalue, discard. Um, it's called the cycle of abuse. So you get mm-hmm. really roped into that, and um, 
and the same thing happened to me. So I ended up in a in a long term um, on and off relationship with this person, and um, you know he blamed me for everything, all the problems in our relationship. You know the the usual. Um, they just tear you down like this, bit by bit by bit, um, slowly mm-hmm. and slowly over time. I have two children with this person. Yeah. Um, they're older now. Having a child with a narcissist is, is you know, at times it can feel like a life sentence. And I, I've yes. been lucky, I guess, <laughs> because my, um, my ex really, uh, and this is common as well, after the kids sort of get to being their own person, you know, I want to say kind of a roughly around puberty when they kind of discover, oh, hey, you know, I, I am my own person. And they start to question and, and do their teenager thing. They probably haven't seen him for maybe five times in the last five, six years. Wow. Wow. And that that is, again, common, 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 common. And the whole financial abuse and post-separation abuse, I experienced that. Um, we're actually 10 years in, in court. Um, oh, my God. He, yeah. Not, not, not uncommon. He, no, he it's not. The court, right? You know, yeah. you know this very well. Yeah, they do. They use right? the court system to perpetuate the abuse. That's part of post-separation yeah. abuse is the, yeah. is, yeah. is how they use the court system. And it's, it's yes, absolutely. It's absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And it's, you know. And the, you know, and the thing is, is that as long as we recognize that, you know, because I have so many clients who are like, well, we went to court and we solved this problem. So it should be done. And it's like, oh no, honey, <laughs> like he's because he, their goal is not to solve a problem. Their goal is to perpetuate abuse. Correct. Is to control and dominate you, right? Using power and control. It always comes down to power and control. So even if they win in court, it doesn't matter. They're going to file another motion. They're going to do something else because their 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 goal is, um, you know, psychological torture. Exactly. Exactly. And to crush you. Yes. They don't care about the kids. They don't care about. No. Uh, I mean, like I said, I, I consider myself lucky because he didn't want custody. Yeah, you yeah, you are lucky. I don't know what I would have done if if I would have experienced, you know, that type of where he wanted to take the kids away from me and this happens again all the time too mm-hmm. because woman is is um I just posted, you know, about reactive abuse. Like the right. woman is the one that seems um hysterical and upset and stressed out and the man appears and it's usually this way because more more narcissists are male statistically. Mm-hmm. And I have I feel like I have to qualify this. And and yes, at we the do, end right. of the day, most domestic violence is perpetrated on women by men. And that's right. those are just the stats, folks. Those are just that's not we're not, you know, we're not man haters. We <laughs> love men. Those are just the stats. That's the fact of it. They are. Yeah, those are the cold hard facts. Mm-hmm. And I think that you know, so much of it has to do with our society, our our culture, how we raise men, how we, you know, disempowerment. I mean, it's really interesting, right? That like narcissism is all about, you know, partially, right? We're talking about entitlement and low, uh, low empathy or no empathy. You know, the way that we raise boys in our toxic uh, culture is by you know, telling them that if they have empathy, they're pussies, they're fags, they're weak, they're right. They're a girl. Um, and so like fucking no wonder, (laughs) no wonder they don't have empathy. Um, we squash it out of them and then we tell them that they're, you know, better and stronger and better than anybody else. And we have that they don't have the, you know, we don't, we don't have a lot of expectations of them. And so the entitlement again, like no wonder, we're churning out narcissists at alarming rates. Yep. And you said it, entitlement. Men, males, are they, they do have male privilege. And again, that's, mm-hmm. that's the patriarchy. And we're gener- like, I mean, I, I can't even begin to guess when all this started, you know, like yeah. how, how far do you go back to, to really address that? It's generation upon generation of yeah. this social conditioning. 
you know, and I don't know, how do you tackle that? I mean, I think that we tackle it by, by doing what we're doing. We're having the conversations we're having and hopefully raising, um, kids differently, um, and to have different experiences. I mean, I think that the number of people that are kids that are coming out, you know, I don't know about your kids, but you know, I think that our kids start to recognize this stuff sooner and they actually now have a name for it. Like we didn't really have a name for it. I didn't know what a narcissist was when I was growing up. I didn't know what to look for. Now it's like, good God, <laughs> so you'd be yeah. hard pressed to, to not know, yep. but hopefully we are starting to make a dent, um, with the work. Oh, that I can do, you know, like I, I raising awareness one quote at, at a time is that's right in my bio. Yep. You know, you can, you, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. All we can do is talk about it, post about it and, and hope the information gets out there. Yep. Absolutely. You know, we were just talking before we hit record about sort of current events. And right now in the news, we've got, and you know, who knows, by the time this airs, I don't know if we're going to have a verdict or whatever, but I still think it's, I think that the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case is possibly one of the most fascinating, not, there is no black and white here. And it's not one of those cases where everyone is like, Oh, like it's totally this, it's totally this, right? Like let's say with Gabby Petito. Yeah. So let's talk about Gabby Petito because I think that those of us who are in the industry, right? As soon as we saw the traffic stop, the Moab. Oh my God. Stop, Immediate. Right. So let's talk about that. So I'm what did you see? Actually, whoa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, my impression would be the same as yours. Now, how do we, how do we unpack this now? People think this is just narcissism or that this is just a simple thing, but it actually is so much more involved than that. So mm. even with the police, I'll I'll start there. The the police force is one of the professions that attracts a higher percentage of of narcissists than than others. And domestic abusers. Uh-huh. So that's part of it. Um, it's also a very much a boys club. Um, the police, force, you know, boys in blue, they are, they don't have, people think, oh yeah, like everybody has training in domestic violence and, and people know stuff and whatnot. It, that is not, not the case. It they is not they the case. often really, really lack any type of training in domestic violence, how to recognize reactive abuse, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So, when you start with that foundation, I mean, what do you, what are you kind of going to expect at that point? Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. we we give them guns, right. Yeah. Which is the ultimate in power and control. The yeah. absolute ultimate. What's that? A what? Penis extender. Oh, yes, <laughs> exactly. Right? It is a it's penis a extender. Penis. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that in there. It threw you off a little bit there. My apologies. <laughs> no, it's great. I've never heard that. And I think it's amazing. And I love it. <laughs> um, that in a car without a muffler, like <laughs> right? all penis extenders. Okay. So yeah. So, so, so then you have, so then you have these guys, right? Exactly. As you describe them, these, their boys club, they're all men who do the yep. traffic stop. They're yep you can tell right away by the way that they're sort of talking to him, that there is this sort of like, Oh yeah, you know, I know why, you know, I, I get into, into arguments with my wife too. Right. There's all of this camaraderie and some of it is maybe training about wanting to make a, you know, people feel comfortable or whatever, but what did you see right off the bat in that traffic stop video? I posted about it uh, just a few days ago. Um, there is the 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 abuser stays calm, mm-hmm. and the victim is melting down every right. single time. Every single time. Brian looks calm, in control. Hey, there's no problem here, officer. Look at me. I'm super calm. How could it? How could I be the problem? Yeah, and right. I don't have a phone. Gabby is, God, when I saw her sitting Mm. in the seat there and talking to the cop and she's crying and she's literally trying to cover his ass Uh and saying, oh, it's my fault, you know, trying to kind of backtrack and, and, you know, cover up for him. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. 
I have, I have OCD. It's me. I get too, I'm just too high strong and I have anxiety and it's right. And I, maybe I was like, I was like hitting him and I was right. All of it. Mm -hmm. Reactive abuse. But guess whose voice that is coming out of her mouth. Mm -hmm. You're too, you're this, you're that, Mm -hmm. you know, you, you tell how he's been in her head slowly eroding her sense of self and her, and her self-confidence again, Mm -hmm. common, common, common. And I knew what it was right away, you know? And I, I mean, I don't know about you, but the the first day that came out that she was Mm -hmm. missing and back to his house alone, I knew she was dead. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And then, you know, and then it was a few days later, a week later or something that the traffic stop video that was made was made available. Right. And that was, and that was the moment that I was like, I mean, we knew she was dead, but that was the moment that I was like, Oh, Oh, uh, now I see the entire picture. And what's so upsetting about that is that you have these cops who were called in because he was hitting her. Yeah. That's literally what the call was. Yeah. And in, you know, and they separated them for a day and then let them go on their way. I mean, it's astonishing when you think about it, isn't it? Like, think about what you just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is astonishing. What's most astonishing to me is that there is had had those cops actually had training in domestic violence, they would have seen these things because when you are, you know, certified as an advocate, you learn this. You learn to recognize the signs and they're not, you know, I mean, that goes with so many other things too, like the use of excessive force and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know that, that the, the, the police force in the United States are the least trained in the whole world. I think they go to cop Mm -hmm. school Academy for like a year, Mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. Most of the places it's literally double that. So if you're not even getting bait, like when I say basic, I mean, to me, that is basic training. That, yes. That's something that should start at the academy level, the, the, the training in domestic violence and how to recognize, you know, mental illness. Yes. Yes, it's absolutely. Cool. I have one of my best friends trains cops all over the country on, on recognizing autism. Yeah. I was just thinking that. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. And what they have said, because so much of what she teaches is empathy and curiosity and like actually connecting with, uh, with the person. And she has had cops and people from the sheriff's department in Los Angeles contact her to tell her that her training saved the life of people that they were arresting that had nothing to do with autism and that it had them... you know, have more empathy on the job. Drug addiction, Mm -hmm. all of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is astonishing that, I mean, if you think about the number of calls that, you know, to 911 that are domestic in nature, the fact, I mean, it's probably the, one of the most common calls that a cop, you know, that, that police get and that they're not trained in it is truly astonishing. You always hear it like, you know, if you hear it on the police scanner or something like that, they're always like, oh, God, another domestic or, oh, my God, it's the Joneses again. Uh, Mm -hmm. What Mm -hmm. is in there with information about the core issue? What we're talking about is that people don't know about narcissism, domestic violence, what it is. They, They think it's just, you know, somebody somebody beating you constantly. It's so much more than that. It's psychological abuse, financial abuse. I mean, I lost my house through all this, you know, the house that I worked for and bought and paid for myself, Mm. you know, financial abuse through, through this, you know, sexual abuse, reproductive coercion, forcing you to be barefoot and pregnant. It's so much more than that. But the only thing that is a, is an arrestable offense is the physical violence. Right. Right. So far. I don't know. Like, should should the police literally be going in there and saying, look, you know, here's a pamphlet on what domestic violence is. How about you read it? Here's some resources. You know, there's help available. Here's an anger management course. Like, wouldn't that solve so many problems? 
I mean, one would hope, right? I mean, the other option is that, you know, when I was watching the Gabby Petito thing, I thought, well, at this point, as soon as they know it's domestic, then call out, you know, we should have teams. We should have domestic violence teams. We should have this, we should have a social worker team that is specially trained in these things. So that as soon as we realize, okay, this rises to this level, we call in another team that actually specializes exactly. in this because we can't expect cops to be to specialize in everything, which no. is, you know, part of the quote, defund the police movement, which I think is horribly named, but it is reallocating. It's, it's, it's asking to reallocate funds so that we can have yeah. more trained specialists on the streets. Yeah, exactly. Mental health advocate, social worker, mm-hmm. addictions, worker, you know, it, it's all part of that. Um, I did mention anger management, and I just mm-hmm, want to qualify mm-hmm. that by saying, you know, abuse is not an anger management problem, and this no. is this is another problem with the system. They're sending these guys to anger management classes five, six times for for beating <laughs> their you know, wife and kids. Yeah. Abusers are not angry when the cop knocks at the door, and they're able to shut off their anger like a light switch. Mm-hmm. They're they control their anger just fine but they feel entitled to abuse you. That's right. Which again goes back to male privilege and entitlement, thinking they own women, um, the whole patriarchy thing. It's it's just so enmeshed in there. Yep. And th- and that's so it's so perfect, right? Like exactly. Brian Laundry was not was not angry. No. He wasn't angry at all. And you know, I think some of the most dangerous abusers are the ones that are actually really calm and quiet yeah, and really yeah. reasonable. And they really make you think that like you are the problem because it sounds really reasonable when they're saying it. Cause you know that you do actually have some of these issues that they're talking about, but they're just exploiting them to abuse you and yeah, using exactly. them as a way of controlling you. And yeah. You know, and Gabby, you could tell how afraid she was, you know, yeah. and how afraid she was to say anything to the cops because she knew, she probably knew on some level what he was capable of. She was scared of him already by that point. And with good reason, he murdered her. Yep. You know, right. and this is one of the reasons that uh, that that victims often protect their abusers because there are repercussions for speaking out sometimes severe sometimes fatal well yes often fatal unfortunately yeah. um but yeah absolutely absolutely and you know we have to say too that this you know that this is across all socioeconomic classes all yeah. races all right this is not a Um, this is not a problem of the uneducated of, you know, this is like, this is of the, you know, this is everybody. This is the suburban housewife. This is the Gabby Petito. This is, it's, you know, these, this is the movie stars. Most of my followers on Instagram are gay males and Uh uh, straight white women. Yes. You know, yes. so that just kind of goes to show what we were talking about before, that that males are perpetrating violence on not only women and children, but on other males as well. And now for a quick word from our sponsor, the all new fully revised Should I Stay or Should I Go? After three years of this program existing in the world and changing women's lives, I decided to give it a full makeover. The all-new version has all-new videos, a podcast-like audio stream if you want to take the work on the go, and completely updated resources for deepening your learning. The program consists of six core modules, the first of which is Who Are You? This is the section in which you dig deeply into your own personal development and get in touch with your inner guide, slay your inner critics, mine for values, and learn how to set healthy boundaries. The second module is how you learn to love and helps you understand your attachment style, love languages, and how to properly love and care for the most important person in all of this, yourself. Module three is called, Why Are Women So Exhausted? 
and breaks down some of the issues around toxic masculinity and male entitlement, the myth of being a stay-at-home mom, and answers the question, he's fine. Why can't I just be happy? Module 4 is all about understanding abuse and includes videos on trauma bonds, understanding the cycles of abuse, particularly how they play out in your own relationship, and addresses addiction, infidelity, and mental illness. Module 5 is all about healing and moving forward and includes videos about therapy, couples therapy, healing from betrayal, emotional regulation, and grief. This section also includes my 90-minute workshop, Tackling Codependence, as well as my signature relationship inventory that will help you gain complete clarity on all the parts of your marriage and figure out what's his and what's yours. And module six answers the question, is the grass really greener on the other side? With in-depth videos on dating, cultural and religious isolation, and what happens if you end up alone forever? Spoiler, you probably won't. Whether you decide to stay or go, this program will set you up for a lifetime of clarity and fulfillment. And if you've already decided to go, the program will help you unpack all that's happened and help you heal so that you can move forward without repeating the same mistakes that got you here in the first place. This program is priced super low at just $697. And if you use the code PODCAST, when you check out, you'll get $50 off the full price. What are you waiting for? You have been agonizing with this decision for long enough. It's time to finally know, should you stay or should you go? And now back to our episode. So, okay. So let's move on to, let's go, let's move on to Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Cause I, I mean, I'm fascinated by this and I haven't posted anything about it yet because I'm still very much in the, in the frame of like, what is happening here? It's very not black and white. It's, there's a lot of, I think, context and nuance and it, you know, you posted about it. I don't know if it was yesterday or, um, and there are hundreds, hundreds of comments about it. And I think it's, and they're also very, um, yeah, th- oh, th- four days ago, you posted 336 comments and they are on both sides. And that's, I mean, I don't even know if we, when I said, let's start way back and work our way forward. I mean, there's, there's a few big ones in between there, including yeah. the Jason. Sudeikis thing with the uh, yeah thing that papers yeah I don't even yeah. know if we have enough time like I would love to do like we could do like literally a whole other show on Amber Heard and Johnny Depp like it's yeah I I don't even know if I can formulate a shorter answer on this because it's it's so this one is giving me pause I'll say that yeah like, like, me too me you know, too. Maybe we'll maybe we'll dig into the older stuff so that your listeners can kind of I don't know make comparisons and maybe we can all come to some kind of a consensus because I'm I don't have that one nailed down and that no I, I don't almost- either and I think that's what's so fascinating about it is that I don't yeah. have it nailed down you know I think that Johnny Depp and Amber Heard is playing out like. <laughs> It's playing out all in front of us. And I'd love to unpack it because I Let's do I it. really have much to say about it, about what I see. But can I give a definitive yes or no? Either way. At this point, I can't. I can just no. observe what I'm seeing. Amber Heard. I mean, she's very disliked. So that's one thing not in her favor because Johnny Depp is for some reason highly revered Jack Sparrow, right? Yeah. He's Amber Heard, gosh. Um yes, she she didn't she didn't donate the money. Um mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we can all agree on that. This this new thing with a psychiatrist, I, I have a problem with the diagnosis. Yes. Right. Uh, borderline personality disorder. I, I don't even know how this expert has diagnosed histrionic personality disorder and BPD, because, again, patriarchy, we're going to come across this word a lot. If you 
research the history of borderline personality disorder. Mm -hmm. It's a disorder mostly given to women because we're, quote unquote, emotional and we can get upset and cry and hysterical. It used to be called hysteria. Uh Uh-huh. Right. Exactly. They started calling it borderline personality disorder. Now, it, it is a cluster B personality disorder. It's on the opposite end of the spectrum, basically, than than narcissistic personality disorder. So NPD is a person that completely lacks empathy for others, lacks feeling and emotion. Borderline personality disorder is the, the total other end of the spectrum. And and again, I'm using quote, quotation marks here. I'm just describing it in a general sort of extreme way for our purposes here. Okay. It's, it's people with extreme emotion, a lot of emotion. Mm-hmm. So a board and a narcissist is two sides of the same coin, but but that's often where the attraction is like a magnet. Right, you know, exactly. The, mm-hmm. To the borderline and, and vice versa in that way. So the difference is um, a diagnosis of a cluster B is often weaponized against a woman in court mm-hmm. to show that she is crazy. She's crazy. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Whereas you don't see that so much. It's it's almost accepted that that a male, an actor, a man would be a narcissist or be more narcissistic because that's just generally accepted in society. Mm-hmm. And and you don't see the same level of of diagnosing a, a man with with NPD and having that weaponized in court for a variety of reasons. One of them is men historically have more money than women. They can afford lawyers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Yes. And isn't it true that in court, we don't get these diagnoses on men. We always get them on women. I mean, not always, not always, but (laughs) but it's very, it's very rare Mm -hmm. to be able to get a diagnosis of NPD um, for a man when you're fighting in court. And I mean, like yep. I said, it's it's historically because the woman is um, at home looking after the kids, not working because narcissists are very, um, they're very sexist and misogynistic like we discussed. So mm-hmm. so they don't do the quote unquote women's work. Mm-hmm. That's all left to you. Surprise. <laughs> so the child care and housework stuff, you know, good luck working a, a paid job on top of that too. So, so it's an imbalance of money right off the bat. And, yep. and you see that with, with depth versus hurt. Right. Right. Yep. It's a power mm-hmm. imbalance. It right is off a pow- the bat. Well, and this is what I was, what I was sort of formulating earlier um, today about this, which is that, you know, at the end of the day, all abuse stems, you know, if we want to find out who the abuser is, you want to find out who is wielding power and control because that's what abuse is. And it feels to me, and I will also say that watching Johnny Depp testify and his, the way that he was speaking was so triggering to me. (laughs) I was like, and I listen, and I come to this conversation as somebody, you know, for whom he was my ultimate teen, like idol, ultimate teen yep. boy fantasy, 21 Jump Street. I'm 51 years old. That man was like, you know, he was it. Um, yeah. And, you know, but when you have testimony that about his drug and alcohol use, and the way that he talks about his drug and alcohol use as like not a problem, right? And yet he's tearing up hotel rooms and he's destroying property and like, but, you know, I just need that to like help me calm down or whatever. It's like, dude, that's like, that's not what it's doing for you. Um, but, but boys, but, Matt, mm-hmm, like, right. look at that historically also, like, like, are we talking about Johnny Depp or Motley Crue? Do you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. a male thing. Right. Exactly. That's, I mean, and Bre- enough Brett Kavanaugh, a, a man, you know, talking about how much he loves beer is now sitting on our Supreme court. Like, like no problem. Um, you know, absolutely. Right. Exactly. Boys will be boys. Ah, whatever. It's fine. You know, he's a, yeah, exactly. Like all, all rock stars tear up hotel rooms. No big deal. Exactly. And, and get away with it. And if a woman did that, she'd be, she'd be in jail so fast. If Amber Heard ripped up a hotel room, she'd probably never, 
work again. Let's right. be honest. That's right. That's right. You no. Know? Uh huh. Is Absolutely. she a likable person? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But again, I, I and I mean, like I said, there's so many strings that connect all of this. Just because you don't like someone, and just because you don't like a woman in particular, and I'm talking about Kim Kardashian now, mm-hmm. doesn't mm-hmm. mean that she is guilty of something. No, absolutely not. Absolutely. I mean, yes. So, uh, yeah, that's right. right? No matter what we think, and like Trevor Noah, I think, said it best, like, it doesn't matter what we think about Kim Kardashian. This is a woman who is, you know, is being abused publicly on the public stage through social media. And post up. Use. Post-separation abuse, a hundred percent. And, and, you know, people are, you know, but, but, um, but we don't like him. Like, yeah. you know, and this is the, this is the expectation of likability for women. Yeah. You know, yeah. Hillary Clinton yeah. lost the election because of her quote, likability, <laughs> you know, <sighs> um, when we like a man, we can still support him. Right. Chris Brown. Mm, right. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, like. I don't know why we uh, like so Chris many, Brown. I, I, I actually had a, a DM conversation with somebody yesterday. Um, and I just, sometimes I just happen to like pop onto someone's page, you know, if they're making, you know, sort of a, it, it was a bit of a strange comment. So I, I looked at their page and it was, you know, a, a woman's page with, with Chris Brown fans and, oh. and following a page on narcissism and, so and, and domestic violence, you know, and yeah. I, I, I had a conversation about it and it, and it was quite enlightening, but people think, oh, God, just mind your own business. Just, you know, don't worry about these celebrities and this and that. Mm. I say this all the time. Reality TV and and celebrity culture is a great place to learn about and observe human behavior. Narcissism is one of those. Yep. Abuse, narcissism, even a plethora of 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 different human conditions can be observed, including post-separation abuse. We've, we've seen that a lot, Mm -hmm. you know, Kanye, domestic Mm -hmm. violence, Rihanna. I mean, you can see, you can see it. Yep. Yep. It's playing out right there, right there in front of us. And yet, even when it's playing out in front of us, half of us or many people will still find ways to excuse it, to, you know, uh, pretend it's not happening, to deny it. Do you un- know who comes to mind? Donald Trump. When I, when I post, <laughs> Does he Trump, though? When he, <laughs> right. I literally, I had some, a, a few women mostly uh-huh. message me. I'm unfollowing you because you're oh, yeah. saying Donald Trump is a narcissist. You can literally see it happening in front of your eyes. You know what I mean? I mean, like, it is can... like, yeah. I mean, like, by the way, Donald Trump would probably be like, yeah, of course I'm a narcissist. Like, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's not, and you they can't really deny it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They often celebrate their narcissism yes. publicly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I, Funny, uh, Andy Cohen called himself a narcissist on the uh, on the uh, Housewives reunion. I just watched that back. Oh. I'm I'm a fan of reality TV. Actually, just just watching, and I might start actually doing some more posts in that vein because you really can you can see it with your own eyes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or you can to recognize what you're seeing, and that can be helpful to your yes. own life. Yes. Yes. I to make those connections. I, I always want to do like a, like a, you know, a commentary, like a live commentary <laughs> as these things are yeah, happening. Right? right. Like one of my favorites, uh, is, um, love is blind. Both seasons of love is blind, just watching for just like attachment, right. For attachment styles to watch. Did you watch yeah. love is blind? I did not. Oh, it's just, I did not. it is. I heard all it. Yeah. I mean, it's utterly fascinating. Um, yeah. and it really is. It's like a social commentary on relationships and especially attachment styles. Wow. Um, 
So, I mean, I think just to wrap up the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard thing, I mean, I, I think that you and I are are coming down on the same side, which seems to be, and correct me if I'm wrong, that I think he's definitely an abuser. I think he's definitely. And I can't can't say that yet. I'm uh-huh. I'm not. This is the only uh-huh. time I can remember where I am so torn. Interesting because. There's so many different things going on at once. Right. Right. And just because, I mean, I just, I, I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm, okay. I'm not there yet. Like I said, I can observe the, the both sides and what's going on. Yeah. And, and there's no question that she did some, she did some out there stuff. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, he took oh my a God, shit like, in his bed, <laughs> right? I mean, that's not normal. No, you know? it's not. It's not. I mean, I, 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 I guess I can only speak for myself and I've never done that. So no. I mean, like, <laughs> I, it's just a head scratcher. I, I mean, how did she manage to record everything right at the perfect time? Doesn't that give some mm-hmm. type of meditation like are you is it reactive abuse right right like is she pushing him pushing him pushing him yeah hitting record and then and then he's exploding yes yeah i mean it's a good it's, it's a it's a good be. point i don't know i it's, don't know yeah. it's confounding it's it's really confounding and I think that, you know, so what I was, I think where, where I'm coming down, uh, which is maybe not, maybe I think you're right. Like it's, it's not that he's definitely the abuser, but I think that these are two very sick individuals who found each yeah. other in, and, yeah. and it's a very toxic relationship. Toxic. Yeah. All around. Absolutely toxic. So again, that's another option. Is it, I mean, they, I don't like to to use the word mutual abuse because no. that's literally not even a thing. That's no, not a thing. It's not. You know, there's an abuser, a victim, reactive abuse, but I just, are they just toxic? Maybe nobody's a narcissist or borderline. Maybe maybe they're literally, like you said, toxic and yeah. and get off on it. Like I just, yeah, it, it's a lot. It is a lot. And and I think that, and I think that what's most upsetting about it right now um, is that what we're seeing, and again, we're recording this on May 2nd, it's going to go live on May 19th. Who knows what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. But what I do know is that, you know, you have this um, person diagnosing her with a disorder that doesn't really exist. This histrionic. It's the same disorder. Like histrionic personality disorder is is not narcissistic personality disorder. Mm-hmm. It's borderline personality disorder. Right. Like there there are a lot of problems with the the current state of the psychiatric profession as well. And I'm going to tell you a funny story. Um, the the psychiatric pr- profession, like we were talking about the cops before, mm-hmm. uh, the psychiatric profession is another profession that attracts a high, high number Mm. of cerebral narcissists, which is the the intellectual narcissist that's going to crush you with their knowledge of all things mental health. Uh Uh-huh. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes, of course. Right. Because what, what better supply than people who are in a weakened emotional vulnerable yep. state. Yeah. I have yep. a lot of clients whose exes are, uh, are therapists or psychologists. Yeah. Yep. And they're like, uh, you know, <laughs> it's terrifying. Same. If I was going to do a demographic, I would say that the highest number of clients that come to me for, for support, I've had multiple, multiple, multiple psych students Mm. And they're like, we're training to be psychiatrists. And we just literally, like, you know, so much more than I do. I can't even, like, we don't Uh learn this stuff. Right. We learn, we're trained. Listen to this. People think that you go to a psychiatrist, they're going to know everything about you. 
these psych students are telling me that they study cluster bees in general for a few months, mm. not even specifically narcissism, cluster, you know, um, BPD, just all the clusters in a general way, hmm. A, B, and C. Just for a couple months that's and that's not, it. Right? Yeah. Like, does Crazy. that not give you pause for, for thought? Yeah. Right. And that's, you know, I mean, I think it's the same thing, you know, with, with just not even psychiatrists, but like therapists in general, people just sort of assume that if someone is a therapist, that they have all of this incredible knowledge and they know everything about everything, but like, like cops and, and, and the law, like, and it's like, no, they, they have a very general education. It's very general. It's very surface level. If you want a yes. good therapist, you need somebody who has been trained additionally and has a specific um, area of specialization that is what you need. Exactly. And again, people don't know this. I spent seven years yep. in talk therapy, marriage therapy with my narcax. This is also common. Yep. 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 Because yep. she yep. was not trained in domestic violence. She was not trauma informed. She had a master's, by the way. Mm -hmm. And she was not trained in narcissism, narcissistic abuse, how to treat it, how to recognize it, none of that. I, again, this is something I say all the time. Talk therapy is not the best treatment for narcissistic abuse recovery. No. And therapists are not trained in how to recognize domestic violence. They're, right. they're, most of them are not. That's right. That's right. And they call and it, you, you know, a mutual yeah. problem and like, yeah. oh, you just set each other off or you two... Oh, you crazy kids. Yeah, right, right. Right. Exactly. Right. Oh, you too. Right. And it's yeah. like, no, 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 no. You know, this is why we always say, you know, that abuse is not, it's not a relationship problem. It's not. It's not something that nope. you should be in really into in therapy with someone about. But first Absolutely we have to not. know that it's abuse. And the problem is that we go to therapy with this person because we think that they're actually interested in healing and having a mutually loving relationship. And the problem is that abusers are not interested in that. That's yeah. not what they want. <laughs> right? Yeah. Or, or they're there just to confirm, just to have the therapist confirm that they are not the problem. It's actually their partner. See mm -hmm. how crazy my partner is acting, mm -hmm. crying, emotional. That happens a lot too, because again, therapists don't recognize narcissism. They don't recognize a narcissist sitting in front of them all the time. This happens. Yep. Yep. And this is, you know, Gabby Petito back to Gabby Petito, not, they don't recognize that the person who is overly emo quote, overly emotional and is out of emotional control is probably the person who's being abused. Being abused. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. That's, that's almost, I want to say the the number one way to tell. And if there's any cops listening, that's the number one way to tell. Yep. The person that is uh, uh, that is so overwrought by what they have been experiencing, and probably for a long period of time before you got there, they need help and mm -hmm. support. They mm -hmm. need resources, information that that they're not crazy. That what they're experiencing is domestic violence. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's the, and that's the thing to be really clear about is that it is actually a form of domestic violence. It is. Yep. hundred percent. Nar narcissistic abuse is domestic violence. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my goodness. We, um, you know, we could talk about this all day and maybe we'll have to do a part two, but I so appreciate okay. you, uh, coming on and, and sharing and talking about this stuff. Cause I think it's, um, you know, as we see with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, it is, it is complex. It is, it is, sometimes it's very black and white, but very often it's not, it's very complex yep. and confusing. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, and you have to really know your stuff. You have mm -hmm. to know what, what you're looking at, Yeah. you know, and that takes training information. You, 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 you have to know about it. There's just so much content out there that if people could just connect the dots and make connections between what they're seeing and the people in their own lives, I don't know. I think it's a good um, 
it's a good way to, you know, to, to, for people to gain knowledge about, about these disorders and, and toxic and unhealthy people. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, all right. So, um, everybody needs to head on over. If you're not already following narcissist survivor, it's narcissist underscore survivor. Is that right? Um, on Instagram. Yep. 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 Um, underscore survivor on Instagram. I've got a, a uh, couple of pages on uh, Facebook too. Um, also Twitter, if you are so inclined uh, to find me there. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed talking with you. And like I said, I could I could talk about narcissism all day long, probably. Yep, same, same. <laughs> all right, I so appreciate you coming on and we will talk again soon for sure. Thanks, Kate, you're awesome. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Divorce Survival Guide podcast. If you like what you hear, head on over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in and leave me a review. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the Divorce Survival Guide. I'll see you next time. And until then, remember, you, my love, deserve to be happy.